APC and PDP in River State are at hit again. SACT chairman vowed to stop the April 17 River State local government elections. And alarm bells go off as DSS warns of plans of religious violence and CAN says it means to cause panic. What is really happening? Well, this is PLOS Politics, and I am Mariana Cohn. The SACT 22 local government chairman and councillors elected under the former governor, Rotimi Amechi, in River State, have threatened to stop the scheduled local government elections in the state. The chairmen who were elected on the platform of the All Progressive Congress, APC, were sacked under the administration of the incumbent governor, Nyesongwike. They stated that it would be contempt of court if the state goes ahead to hold the local government polls as scheduled for 17th of April 2021. Now, speaking for the elected APC chairman and councillors, we're being joined by Honorable Shogbe Eli and uh, the SAC. So he said that the SAC chairman and councillors have vowed to return to the Court of Appeal on February 1, 2021, where the appeal over the SAC is pending. And also joining us live from River State is Eugene Abels. He is uh, a political um, commentator, and of course, he is a citizen of River State. Uh, thank you, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you for having me. Okay, so I'm going to start with you, Sobe Eli. Um, I, I know I have spoken with you over and over again on this case. It has dragged on for so long. And I, I'm, I'm guessing that a lot of people may have even forgotten about this issue, but here we are again, years down the line, and 23 sacked local government um, chairmen and councillors are back at it. What exactly is this about this time? Well, uh, thanks for having me one more time, and uh, good evening, my brother Eugene. Uh, it's the it's same, it's same old, same old story. Simple story. Uh, some set of Nigerians from River State who belong to the People's Democratic Party uh, in 2015, 30 feet, and probably wise not to run for the council elections declared that year uh, to hold on May 23rd. They approached the federal courts seeking an order of injunction to restrain INEC from releasing the voters register to RISEC for the purpose of conducting elections. And they had their grievances. Now, we have moved on from that point. The elections held. Uh, if, I mean, I want to bother with the details. But the Friday court, federal high court, then presided over by Justice Lambert can be, and nullified the elections against the rule of the game. We filed a motion for him to hear us as council chairman. <laughs> the motion was before him. He didn't hear us. And nullified the elections. That's the beginning of this journey. We filed uh, an appeal at the Court of Appeal for Jackot, seeking for uh, leave, seeking leave of the court to appeal the judgment as an interested party. In the wisdom of the appeal court, on June 20, 2016, that was granted. I will enter the appeal, compiled and transmitted records to the appeal court. So we're set to go. But our friends on the other side, <laughs> again, for reasons best known to them alone, uh, ran to the Supreme Court and filed two motions. One, to stay proceedings at the Court of Appeal, the court below, and the other, to, to, to challenge the decision of the Court of Appeal. Mm. But that were there for over two years. Those appellants, RISEC, ironically, that conducted elections, and the PDP, ran down the clock for over two years and did nothing at the, at the Supreme Court. In December of 2019, the Supreme Court dismissed the applications and awarded a cost of one million dollars against them, one million dollars to each set of, 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 of respondents. First respondents, first to 23 respondents, one set, 25 respondents, and 26. To this day, they have not paid. We are back at the appeal court in Puerto Court since then, and we'll be there for five solid times. We're going back again on the 1st of February. 
about the last adjournment in October 2020. All right? And here we are. The same thing they did the last time. Instead of coming to defend the judgment of the federal court that gave them the counsels, they are running Helter Skelter looking for her to do elections. That's the question we're asking that we're not Nigerians. I wouldn't entitled to be heard. Mr. Eugene, let me bring you in here. Um, there are people who have said, just like the PDP, that this election um, that was, of course, thrown out by the government of Nyesong Wike was termed illegal. They said that there was a court injunction against that election, even holding in the first instance uh, under governor, former Governor Rotimi Amechi at the time, but then they still proceeded uh, which had led to all of this imbroglio that we're facing right now. But what Sobeye has said and the fact that he's claiming that they've gone to court and they have won the PDP and the government of um, Governor Nyesho Mike five times clearly, um, is it not a, a, a process that should allow for uh, the PDP and the APC to face off clearly uh, again at the polls, instead of having to drag this on in court. I will come back to you, Sugeye, but I want to hear from um, Eugene. Um, first of all, the judiciary in Nigeria is over 50 years old, and um, it's embarrassing that we see this kind of things play out. And um, it, it makes people to worry. We all who have seen in the past 20 years that local government elections, where the ruling party takes it all, it has become the bane. So people don't have any belief or faith in it. The state electoral offices, people have seen them serially raped, serially abused. So nobody has faith in local elections. So we are also not surprised the quality of governance which we get from the local government areas. Don't forget, for a reason, politics was made local. For you to register for a party, you must go to your local ward. It was for a reason to bring development close to the people. But this minor responsibility has been given to the local, to the states to manage. Look at how they've, whether it be in Anambra, whether it be in Lagos, wherever, it has been the same story from 1999. And it is, a, it is a, it's abusive, it is disgraceful. And you saw how the table suddenly changed. Late in the day, the Rotimi Alimechi administration did run that election. And because the PDP people then, whom they were former members, didn't have faith in it, so they ran to the courts. But it was the right of that administration to run the elections. And those who ran, they won the election, supposedly, yeah. And they went to the courts. Now, bringing it back to the judiciary, we saw a recent example where the President of the United States of America said that the elections that were conducted, which were mostly state-run, where he found he was not happy with it. His councils went, for, they went to court about 33 or 34 times. But the judicial system ensured that every issue that was put before them were adequately dealt with. Why, it, why will these 22 local government chairmen suffer like this? Why would the judiciary allow this kind of misnomer to take place? Now you are getting conflicting signals. I know that their matter was thrown out at their KMB level. They went to the industrial court, got a judgment. The PDP is on one side doing it, on the APC is on one side do, do, doing it on. They're supposed to be an arbiter, and that arbiter is a judicial system. So, it, so when they say that cliche that we borrow, that the judiciary is the last stop of the con, is a lie. It's not true. In Nigeria, it is an aberration. This is embarrassing. It shouldn't happen. The judiciary, particularly the Judicial Council, the NJC, is supposed to call all everybody involved in matter and let the matter be trashed out clearly for the sake of precedence. It, it doesn't make sense. Now, if Sobe has said the history of it, is it his right to that the right to go to court? Yes, they're seeking redress. Whether you're happy with it or not, it does not matter. It is the right of the judiciary to say now, within the confines of the law, both of the federal electoral laws or those governing establishment of great, uh, state electoral offices and the right of politicians to play at that level. This is what we are ruling. And what court A is saying should be what the final court is saying. And we shouldn't see this kind of shenanigans going on. It is not nice. It's not palatable. It's unfortunate. 
Well, Eugene, I want to ask another question. This is something that we see, and it's not just detail for River State. It's what we're seeing. The governors seem to be, um, you know, high-handed when it comes to local governments, whether it's their finances, whether it's the elections. Several states, as we speak right now, including Rivers. In fact, Rivers is one of the states that has decided to run local government elections. But there are so many states who have not in any way run local government elections for a very long time. Uh, instead, they have what they call um, an ad hoc committee or they just, you know, handpick people from their camps to run uh, for these offices. And, and this has happened over time. Uh, right after the um, Obasanjo administration, we saw this happen over and over. But it seems that you are not necessarily blaming politicians who have been perpetrating this, but you are pointing fingers to the courts, especially in the case of this um, 23 sacked chairman and councillors. Why do you think that... Um, both the APC and the PDP have been going back and forth in court, apart from the fact that you're saying the system has failed. Don't you think that maybe the law in itself has so many loopholes and maybe that's what these politicians have taken advantage of? Because if it was clear court, just like you made reference to the United States, we probably wouldn't still be having this issue drag on for so long, would we? Yeah, it's, we're, we're basically saying the same thing. I'm saying that it has gotten to the point after five years, they've just matter started in 2015, we're in 2021, and people are running back and forth in the courts. You know, it, it is, we should stop this kind of things. And that's, I How do we do that? We keep, saying, we keep saying we want things oh. to stop or things to change. <laughs> How do we go about it? Because we're still using the same constitution, the same laws. Um, I mean, that's, there's that saying of doing the same thing over and over and hoping for a change, but... I mean, how do we go about it? We're looking for solutions here. If this must stop, if we must put an end to situations like this, where do we go? What do we do? What are the things that we need to address for this to change? I suspect that the people responsible for this should be the National Judicial Council to call everybody to order. If they have to hold all kinds of meetings that are needed from, with the, from the Chief Justice of the Federation, they have the, they have an administrative structure. They have those. They have the various segments of the justice system. They can sit down and clean up their house and say, "Look, we cannot permit this kind of things because these things are being recorded as precedent. Some of them are becoming laughable." So that the the judiciary is supposed to make the laws have been created. The judiciary is supposed to create the systems to make sure that they become near perfect. But as we go, we evolve. So that if there are gaps, the judiciary will point at it that, look, oh, these are the gaps we have noticed. So, or there's a lacuna here that we, we they, then they can throw that back to the National Assembly. But Nigeria has, is not bereft of laws. But we're saying that it is time for us to learn how to do things systematically. I was done in the past when we were growing up as kids in this country. It's becoming more and more messy. I don't want to go into all kinds of rulings that we have seen. We've seen somebody lose an election because a judge that was sitting in the tribunal didn't sign a attendance register. We've seen somebody lose, and for all kinds of reasons, we've seen evidence taken from a, a, an employee while the state institution that's supposed to grant evidence was seated, they never consulted them. We saw that happen in a way. We cannot allow it. These are the things, when people lose hope in the system, we saw what happened in the Capitol here. Uh, so people, this is the, there's a reason why we have the judicial system. Their responsibility is to create order. When confusion comes like this, it is pushed back to them. They now define things. Hmm. And okay, and if there's a lacuna, they point at it and push it back to the legislature. That look, we need to create this amendment or that. Remember the issues of electronic uh, voter register and things like that. Mm -hmm. There have been improvements, but at yes, we cannot continue like this. This, thing, this is an embarrassment. Let's stop this kind of thing in Nigeria. Back, back to you, Sobe. Um, you had a press conference yesterday, um, January 11, 2021, and I want to quote something that you know was said in that statement. Uh, you made a statement about the uh, suppression of rights uh, of the people of River State. You talked about um, subversion. Uh, you talked about it being capable 
of you know, um, provoking responses that could occasion a breakdown of law and order. And then you're also kicking against this election that is supposed to happen come April 17. What is your plan? Aside so that you have a case in court uh, that we really can't talk about, uh, which is um, in sometime in February, what do you hope to do? Uh, what do you hope to see change? Because uh, from the look of things, the, the PDP government definitely will go ahead with this election. And what if they say, look, Instead of continuing to drag this on in court, come and face us at the polls. Would you do it? Well, maybe that's with respect to whosoever holds our view. That's grand stupidity. We wouldn't do that. That would be surrendering our rights to, to, to the rule of the thumb. If we wanted to do that, we would have done that five years ago. You, you mentioned that went to the industrial court who have still before I can be, when he was not going to hear us. I mentioned here that after we met the council chairman, we filed a motion to be heard for joining them. It's part of our practice. Now, the judge in his wisdom refused to do that. And even while the motion was for him, he gave an order to nullify the election. It's not done. Now, when we went to the industrial court, it was because he was not going to listen to us. That's when we went to the industrial court. That was before July 9, 2015. Now, come July 9, 2015, he had nullified the election for which he gave no order. Maybe I should read this. I need to lay the foundation so our audience to follow us well. On the 22nd day of April 2015, the same judge, the same judge, when he took that matter, said the respondents be and are hereby ordered to appear in this court on Wednesday, the 29th of April 2015. To show cause why the other sort, that is prayer five, shall not be made or granted. Maybe that's all that the PDP is mistaken to be an order to stop the election. We we're not the respondents in that case. The respondents were INEC and RISIEC. I'm talking about FHC stroke, PH stroke, CS stroke 84, so 2015, which is the root of this crisis. Now we're saying a simple thing. We have gone beyond that point. We have, we, have, we have filed an appeal as Nigerians. We are entitled to file an appeal. Mm -hmm. We should be heard. Now, they ran to the Supreme Court and had come back from the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court, this wisdom, dismissed the appeal. I want the cause against them, we we'll have a case. Now, they come back to protect the appeal court and file all sorts of motions to buy time. And, they, you know, people say we don't respect the courts. The PDP has shown impunity on the highest order in this case. And as Nigerians are saying, it's against the rule of law. You can't do that to us. We are first and foremost Nigerians before we became politicians in PDP or APC. Now, the Nigerian constitution gives us rights. And we're saying that those rights must be protected by anyone in government. Mm -hmm. Wuke is governor of River State. Wuke is not governor of PDP. Wuke is governor of Subayilai. I belong to River State of Nigeria. Now, it's Wuke's business to protect my rights. The same constitution in this wisdom allows for multi party democracy. We all must not belong to the same political party. Now, the fact that I belong to the APC does not mean I have traded off my rights under the law. No. So, back to the question whether or not what will happen. See, we are returning to the appeal court on the 1st of February 2021. It is left for the court in whose bosom lies the law to decide what will happen. We couldn't do anything when they did what they did in 2018 because at that point, the appeal court itself here, they are frozen the jurisdiction of the court. The jurisdiction of the court that was frozen by the appeal they filed at the Supreme Court. So since the appeal court that couldn't do anything, we can't resort to self-help. So they went ahead and abused the, the judicial process, held on the election. Now, we're back to where we started before. We shouldn't be talking about this by now. If they have a grounds, I heard you say the, there's another court, so the election, there's no other court. I challenge the PDP, I challenge anyone in the PDP to produce one evidence. It's not there, it never happened. It never happened. What I read to you is what the judge said to show cause. Why? Now, on that day, that 29th, the lawyer for research at that time was BEI1 for SAN. He had gone to the appeal court and filed a motion to stay proceedings in the court below in the high court. So that day, the court adjourned Sine DI. He never gave another. Election said, who was on it. Then he came back and, and somebody told him, to evoke his pervasive jurisdiction. And do you know who that person is? 
or who other person was, the same Emmanuel Chiwen Wagoma, Elder Brown to Wagoma, was cast to the PDP. He was rewarded by Wiki with the Office of Attorney General of River State and simply transferred the case file from his private practice to the Office of Attorney General and sat on the Office well, of Attorney General's well, desk well, well, and then executed again, this well, coup. Then again, his, yeah. his appointment, we, we really cannot tell if it was an award or not he was appointed. We cannot really tell. I mean, that's just... No, no, just no, to put no, that no, out no, there. No, let me be clear. Mira, let me be clear on this. Mira, let me be clear on this. I said there's a difference between Manuel Aguma as counsel to the PDP pre July 9, 2015, when that annulment came, and and, and uh, 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 Gogma, sorry, Emmanuel Aguma as Attorney General of River State. Now, when he became Attorney General, and, and as I said, it is his school, I said he, first and foremost, we can nullify, we can not, not only nullify election, we can disbanded all statutory appointees. But he was appointed, he wasn't awarded, was he? Excuse me. I, I'm important. laying the foundation. I'm, I'm laying the foundation. I told you that Picot had taken over this matter, and the federal court had just seen it there. Now, when he took over as attorney general, he went and withdrew that appeal prematurely to allow for the federal court to do what they did. Two, they nullified, they, 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 they disbanded the research headed by Professor Gosna Hezo, which apparently is tenured, statutory appointment. The same thing they did to the, to the boards of the Riverside Assembly Commission. River State Civil Service Commission, River State Local Government Service Commission, all those boards are disbanded because they are APC members. But remember, President Mohamed Bouhari took over at the same time on May 29, 2015. And PDP members in federal boards stayed and ran their tenders down. That's what I'm talking about here. You don't turn politics into governance and governance into politics. They're two different things. So we're saying that come February 1st, they should allow the due process of law to prevail. This is what they're doing is sort of self-help. They're provoking us. I was not ready to do anything that looks like it's illegal. Let this appeal courts that the the jurisdiction of the matter now. Let them determine the case one way or the other. If the appeal court tomorrow wakes up and says, guys, your case, you have no case here, go home. We'll go home. Then they can go ahead and run the elections. But pretending that we're not Nigerians or that we're Nigerians by, by, by assimilation, so we do not have rights under this constitution, is the height of, is the height of provocation. They have done this for too long. And don't forget, the Supreme Court had ruled severally that low governments, look, governors should stop tampering with low government councils. You just mentioned it here. When they do elections, when they conduct elections in all the states, the, 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 the chairmen that are produced from all the elections are from the governor's party. Mm -hmm. And it's affecting the quality of the grassroots and, 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 and hence my last it's question to you. Hence, hence my last question to you, because we need to wrap this up. If you have, just what you just said, this is a PDP government, and you hope, I mean, I, I'm hoping that the courts will do whatever they have to do, but you're hoping that you win an election and run as a local government of APC, because you were all 23 of you were of the APC, and you all won, obviously, because the governor that was in power was an APC governor, or a PDP governor turned APC, and you hope that you would win this court case and run a local government under a PDP administration. Quickly, in a few words, how well do you think that's going to fare? Okay, is a PDP governor serving his people under an APC federal government. Muhammad Bari is of the APC case of the PDP. I have been in the implosion. The bottom line is service of the people. That's the bottom line. Has that, been the, has, that, has that been the case in Nigerian politics? Let's, not, let's be very realistic. Which PDP person, no. as we speak, because you keep making reference to the Mohamed Buhari administration, which PDP person is serving uh, on the Mohamed Buhari administration? Because you're saying he's the president no, no, of Nigeria. No, that's, and that's true. No, no, the no, president no, is yeah. the president for all, but which PDP person is serving on that administration? Uh, mira, mira. Madam, I hope you're not mistaking appointees for elected. No, 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 no. I'm just, I'm just, no, no, no. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I know that there are governors who have been elected in their states and local governments. But I'm saying, you know what I mean when it comes to state elections. That's totally different from federal elections and House of Reps elections. I'm asking in well, this regard of local I, government elections, how well do you think? I'm not preempting anything. I'm just asking a simple question because you said that the governor is the governor of all, which is clear, of course. And don't forget, when you won that election, um, former governor Roti Miyamichi was the governor. So 
you all won. It was a landslide victory. Yeah. There was not one person from the PDP who won in that election. So my question is... The PDP did not contest. The PDP by contest because, elections. Because... They didn't contest. Exactly. And they had their reasons. They felt like the elections were not going to be free, fair, and credible. They, they that's an no issue. On, that's an listen, issue. Listen, listen. Miriam, they that's no another reasons. issue. And I'm not, I'm not no here reasons. to make a case Every, for the PDP. I'm asking how well... I asked a simple question. Let, let me make you this point. Were, hold on, sir. If you were to win this case, and I, I don't want to talk about the case, how well do you think that the relationship with, between you and the government of the day will work? Okay, see, there's what they call the reverse state law government law that regulates the management and administration of the councils. There's also an institution known to law called the reverse state law government service commission, where civil servants employed to work in low government system who are not political appointees, report to. For instance, as council chairman, I do not sign checks. I only approve schedules. It's the council treasurer and council heads of personal management that sign checks before I can access funds. That's for assembly of the state, created under section 90 of the 1999 constitution, supervises the local government as well. So, the governor has, has no problem regulating local government councils under him. They must not come from his party. There are statutory organs created by law and the constitution that can regulate us and have a harmonious relationship. Okay. All right. So, I think I think I think you attempted my question. But Eugene, before um, we wrap this up, I'm gonna my next question is for Eugene Abels. Eugene, uh, you have no dog in this fight, obviously. You're not a politician in any way. Um, how do you see this panning out? I mean, I asked him a question, and I don't know um, if he was able to answer it properly, but I want to ask you the same question. If this were to be the case, um, how well do you think this will work? Bearing in mind that we still have an issue with governors having to regulate local government councils as opposed to what the law indicates. Well, you know, there's, even though we, we cry for uh, things to be done properly, we know that they're all guilty of the same crimes. Don't forget that Sobe used to be a staunch member of the PDP. He was a chair, local government chairman under the PDP, youth leader, troublemaker, everything. And uh, if you go back to see the, the, even the internal crisis in the APC within the, during the last, before the last elections, you can see the shenanigans in the courts, what they turned the courts into, became ridiculous. So they are the political class of 1999 who are still in office. They're all of the same school, have the same bad habits, but you will not blame them. It's not their fault. It's the fault of the managers of the institutions who have refused to do what they are supposed to do. So this one stops at the table of the Chief Justice of the Republic of Nigeria. Stops at his table. If he wants that under his tenure, the judiciary was reduced to, it depends on what legacy he wants to leave behind. It is time for him to call, rein in the politicians, whether it be PDP or APC, and say, look, this is by watch and this is how things must be done. There are institutions, so sanction lawyers, uh, judges and lawyers in the judiciary. So it's for him, for the Chief Justice of Nigeria to